So let's wrap up 2023. Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Red Dan and I'm a vicar in the Church of England. So 2023 is almost at an end and what a year it has been for the global church and especially for my denomination, the Church of England, with the bringing in of same-sex blessings. In this video, I'm going to go through the most watched videos of each month of the year, looking at what you watched and I thank you for that. Just before we jump into the videos and as we go into 2024, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell and every time I release a video, you will be able to watch it straight away. January's video was a music video called Hoopa Bakanda by an artist named Pogo, where he's taking the mickey out of prosperity preachers, taking Richard Tilton, who was a prosperity preacher, taking his words, mixing it in with music. It's a fun video. I love the song. And it, <laughs> it just shows the joke that prosperity preachers are. In February, the channel starts to grow as I start to comment on the news coming out. And, and it all really starts with the Church of England and the General Synod start voting to bless same-sex couples. The, the biggest video was the Church of England votes to bless same-sex couples. Is this the end? This is back when it first happened. There was a, a lot of what is going to happen? How is this all going to play out? And is this the end of the Church of England? Is this the beginning of the end? We still got a long way to go. The church is very, very, very divided. But at that time in February, it was a big well, shock. Uh, you know, a lot of us coming to the Church of England to faithfully preach the gospel, to to do what God's calling us to do. And then February happened, the General Synod vote happened, and it was where is the Church of England going to go? And we're still figuring that out. We are in a better place, as it were. But, you know, it, this month in December, same-sex blessings did happen. And it's quite quick from February to December, from it going through to it is happening and we still are working out what the Church of England will look like and what it will be in the future. In March, you're going to actually get a bonus video, but the biggest video of the year so far was the London Evangelicals breaking away from the Church of England. So London is leading the way, as it were, in the response as local churches to living in love and faith. And Lon London Evangelicals, big evangelical churches, started to form their own structures, substructures within the Church of England, uh, their own chapters. So in each er area of the Church of England, uh, you, it's called a deanery, and you would have a chapter, that's where the clergy meet, and you have a synod, and that's where things can be voted at a local level and discussed at a local level. And so in good conscience, these evangelical churches couldn't work with the more progressive churches and formed their own chapters, which... There was no legal structure and they can do that. It's, it's clergy meeting up. But they started to say we have to differentiate ourselves away from uh, other clergy and other churches that we feel are moving away from the Bible as we re have received it and the doctrine of the Church of England. And it, it was, you know, big for us. This is just a few weeks after the General Synod had happened. And it's like, is this going to go now? across the land is this going to be the way that we are going to operate as a church more informally within the formal structures and the second bonus video was my video of i'm leaving the church of england now that video was a, a, a kind of headline as it were of i'm leaving the church of england but the actual video was me talking about the struggles of when i when god calls me away from my present parish and i feel called to somewhere else and it was more of a question if i feel that god calls me to a, a, a particular place and that calling is beyond you know i i know that i'm called there but the church which is there which is the church of england is a progressive church and they wouldn't uh, necessarily want me to go there and if that was the case i that i would leave the church of england uh, to go serve where god wants me to serve because my calling is above my denomination so it, in essence the video was uh, i will leave the church of england because god calls me to a place and i will serve god uh, what was interesting about the video was a lot of people saw the headline and it, you know even over the christmas period after one of the services in 
at church, in my church, uh, someone said, are you, are you leaving? That I heard that you're leaving the Church of England. And I had to explain, no, I'm not. And it's one of the biggest videos where I've had to say so many times, have you watched the video? In April, the video was actually an interesting one. It was a prophecy called, will this prophecy about the Church of England come true? And it was a, a few years ago, that this guy outside of the Church of England in a different denomination had a prophecy about the Church of England and it's called the Oak Tree in the Church of England. And it's about an oak tree that splits and half of it starts falling down and the weeds come up and pull, pull it down. And there's the other part still standing and out of the other part starts green shoots, it starts new branches, as it were. And it's a prophecy about this is what's going to happen to the Church of England, but in the long run, what is still standing, what is staying faithful, new shoots, will, new life will come from that. It seems like that prophecy is coming true now. I understand that people will be different to... Um, have different views on whether that prophecy is is valid for today but it, it, it does seem that this is what's happening to the church of england and i do believe that uh, what will come from what is the faithful that is still standing on the gospel and the and the word of god that maybe not in our tenures in our in our time of calling before we either go to glory or retire if you ever retire from being a, a priest that is that uh, we will pass on to a future generation something that is more biblically orthodox but that's the back in uh, april when this came out we were still trying to understand what was going to happen to the church of england how we were going to work as a church of england split it may we move away from the news of the church of england and i see through all the videos there's a, a thread uh, about being the church of england it's probably because i'm a, a church of england vicar even though i do comment on other news as well and this one was about the coronation because we were in the time of the coronation of the king, which is quite an extraordinary event in, uh, in England and in the world, in the UK, because this is the first time for many people that we had seen a coronation because Queen Elizabeth had been uh, around for so long, which is also a great thing. And the biggest video here was uh, Christ, the coronation and controversy. So this video I talked about the news that was coming out and that the the service was going to be watered down in one sense and, and perhaps other faiths brought in. And I, and I know King Charles is very keen on other faiths to be, be represented. But this is a Christian occasion which has happened for hundreds and hundreds of years where it's, it's the archbishop that crowns the king and it is Christ that's proclaimed and it was the king who serves the king of kings. And so there was a worry with the... the news coming out that the service wasn't going to be as christian but i watched that service and i did do a video after and said you know well done the church of england because christ was proclaimed and millions of people would have billions in fact would have seen that service and hopefully hopefully there was enough in there for people to come to know jesus in june the first verse dance roundup makes it into the most watched videos and in this video, talking about a few things, is about the deepening crisis at Soul Survivor at Watford and, and Mike Pilovacci has been suspended for inappropriate behaviour and safeguarding concerns. And in June, we hear about the news of Andy Croft, another pastor there, a lead pastor who was suspended for not uh, passing on information or reporting safeguarding concerns. And that is all now being resolved. But Andy Croft has resigned from his position um, Welby it was voted one of the most influential people on the left which was quite interesting um, recognising probably where he stand, stands politically and uh, should archbishops be known for their political views uh, I don't know I, I don't know the rest of what the archbishops uh, the rest of the archbishops where they, that they stood and whether they were overtly um, political in their speeches but Welby was um, voted uh, one of the most influential left-leaning people in the country today and then we had the story of a vicar I think it's down in Cornwall who the parishioners didn't want him and they were trying to get him out did a vote of no confidence it was all messy and he said no I stay in here because the Holy Spirit has called me here and I'm not going to go until God calls me away which is quite interesting because 
with all the same-sex blessings uh, in the Church of England and, and that going forward. It was kind of probably news that made a lot of us think if God's called us here and into the Church of England, should we be leaving? Quite a, a, a difficult time for people, but, um, you know, maybe, maybe that story helped a lot of people. In July, it's the first time and hopefully the only time that I haven't worn my collar in a video. And it was because... The General Synod happened and we knew, I think we knew at this time, that the Living and Love and Faith process wasn't going to happen in July and be completed. It was going to go to November. But I watched the General Synod and it was so frustrating because uh, it was all about legalities and, and people calling points of order. And it was like this real political tussle, you know, and we're the Church of Christ. We're called to proclaim the gospel and I know that rules and laws have been brought in because people have done thing, wrong things in the past or other people are looking forward and saying we need to put this in place to make sure bad things don't happen. And, and that's quite right to, to help the Church of England, or it's quite right, should I say, to enable the Church of England to, to be able to do what God, Jesus has called us to do. But at this general sudden, it, it just became like the, the, the legalities were just used over and over again in the wrong way way and it was just so frustrating many people looking in who were not of the church of england or not christians would would have been just as frustrated as i was and and hopefully hopefully we've learned from that general synod and we can move forward and never let that happen again so in august the video was well ha this happened to all faithful clergy this was in response to uh, archie coates who's the vicar of holy trinity brompton and the htb network signing a letter in a personal capacity uh, to the house of bishops and the archbishop saying don't go forward with uh, the llf process and 27 signatories from one of his churches uh, published a kind of public letter and, and an email mail response to him and this was you know is this the way that is this what's going to happen to a lot of Church of England vicars when they're known, when it becomes known, where they stand on uh, the living and love and faith and same-sex blessings, that uh, they will get people who will then respond to them. Now, the response is not bad, absolutely not bad. I'm not saying that people shouldn't be able to respond by email or phone or by meeting. That's absolutely right and have a discussion. And I've done that myself. But it went public. And so it was kind of trying to understand when there's disagreement within a local church, which there will be with the vicar who holds to an orthodox view, will it get out into the public domain? Will it get out locally? And how much pressure would that put on the local vicar? Because it's, it's not easy um, when your views and your name are put out into your local context without... Uh, your context or where you're coming from or why you hold that view it just becomes a headline and people go by that headline and so that you know is this going to happen to all faithful clergy i hope it doesn't i hope that people within church where they have disagreement over this will be able to do it privately uh, through if it has to be through email but better to meet face to face september was actually a really close month with four videos with a few hundred views between them and it's very much dominated by the Mike Pilavachi scandal he was found guilty of safeguarding concerns he had already resigned his role as uh, leader of uh, Soul Survivor in Watford also Andy Croft put out a statement about it because but be he couldn't go too far because the investigation was still going on and I did a video about Mike Pilavachi and what we can learn because we we have these celebrity preachers uh, and Mike Pilavachi was going around the world, he was, he was so well known, had written books, was going to the big conferences and preaching. And at the same time, all, all of the safeguarding uh, concerns that were put out about him were, were happening over all the years, for many, many, many years. And how do we respond to that? What can we learn from what happened with Mike Pilavachi and, and ensure, yes, there are amazing preachers out there, amazing people who can speak but how can we make sure that we're, when we're listening to them at the conferences they are living a good and holy life but the safeguarding scandal at Watford no wonder it dominated uh, three of the videos because 
it was it was so big and it was so unexpected uh, uh, expected and it rocked the church church of england and the evangelical world we have to learn from this and uh, you know because it got into the media so much hopefully hopefully we will be able to learn from this and move on the other video was uh oxford university students have put out a a safe list list for churches in oxford ones that are more progressive and ones that are more conservative obviously they we're pointing people to the more progressive churches but in the same way uh, it points those who want biblical orthodoxy to those churches which are uh, standing on the word of god in october i released my interview with calvin robinson entitled calvin robinson's biggest challenge yet it was actually recorded in august but because of a sound issue which i eventually got fixed i released a in October this is where we sat down and he challenged me about my video I'm leaving the Church of England and why I'm not leaving the Church of England it was a, a bit of two and a fro it was it was an interesting one personally because uh, I think it's fair to say I would see Calvin Robertson as more Anglo-Catholic and but I think he also says he's evangelical in a way as well I'm evangelical we see the church in different ways the ecclesiology of the church in different ways so what he was speaking and challenging me on i had to think a bit because um i don't see the church the same way he does but what's interesting what i reflected on after was with my anglo-catholic friends who are orthodox we are actually coming together we're working closer together and finding more unity because of lf and in that i'm understanding more of the anglo-catholic tradition than i did before more of their ecclesiology and um especially after the uh, uh, calvin interview um to understand what it is as evangelicals in the church of england and what the structures mean and what the bishops mean, uh, are and all those things because you know evangelicals we just we're in our local context and we want to get out and preach the gospel and preach the word of God and all these structures. Well, for me, but they were never, they were there and you work within them, but they weren't so important. I joked, uh, you know, with, with friends and other people that, you know, since I left, uh, all these structures, uh, we, we, we never used to care about them and, and the bishops and all those things before. But now we do, we've taken more of an interest in them. The other big video, so this is the second bonus video, is uh, the 11 now 12 faithful bishops to sent to Alalef. And this was huge. This is absolutely huge. I don't think uh, this has happened in the House of Bishops where it's been so divided since the, the formation of the Church of England after the Reformation. Where you get 12 bishops and at the time 11 pertinent signatures to a letter to say we dissent from the Alalef and, and the process going into November Synod. Um, saying you're not following the process of general synod you're not looking at the legal or theological advice that has been given and we cannot in good conscience um, go forward uh, with this um, and put our names to it it was absolutely huge you also had over 160 ordinance right into the house of bishops and the archbishops saying do not go forward with this this is this is absolutely wrong which is unheard of and they're really putting their head above the power pit there so october was really a month of unprecedented news within the church of england because this has never happened before in november was my response to the vote being passed through for general synod that same sex blessings were going to happen and with the oxford amendment meaning that standalone services could be now happening from next year as an experimental period up until 2025 when the general synod gets to vote whether it will formally adopt into the doctrine of same-sex blessings and i just come back from kenya uh, after a visit out there to the anglican church out there and staying with the bishop out there meeting so many great people and seeing such great work out there and coming back and having the general synod and this vote going through and there's a lot of practical things out there this is what we should do with the uh, locally and, and with the bishops and with the church and the diocese and you know and that's right how do we respond practically as a church to that practically as orthodox clergy and laity and churches to what has just happened and that's that's important don't uh, take that away but um my video is very much about let's go preach the gospel let's just go preach the gospel this is what jesus has called us to do this is sidetracking us massively and it's distracting us a lot from going out to preach the gospel it's it's divisive it's it's created a lot of division in 
churches and, and, and in local communities even. But we must stand and go and preach the gospel. Still stand on that. And in December, even though the same sex blessings happened, the biggest video was, uh, so this happened. It was a, a vicar in the Diocese of Ely called Alice Goodman, who wrote in Prospect magazine that she had already done a same sex blessing. Well, more than that, it was it was quite a, a, a service, an occasion, and she couldn't wait for the standalone services next year. It was all booked in, so she went ahead and, and did the service of blessing for a couple and then wrote about it in a magazine and that was like quite wow this is this is huge uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a process now uh, a response from the bishop of Ely we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens with that but this was you know wow you know we all go through the process we went through the synod um, and it's not going to happen she did the service before the general synod but after the papers came out of from the general synod saying what was going to happen but she went ahead and did it anyway but i think the biggest thing was it's not just going ahead to do it anyway because we know that it's happening across the church of england these services but to write it in a magazine it was and still is huge so that's 2023 and the most watched videos for each month of the year. What's going to happen in 2024? Where will we go? What will be the news coming out? Will it be as big as this year? Subscribe to this channel to find out. Put that notification bell on. And as soon as I release a video, you will hear about my response to what's happening in the Christian world.